Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton and welcome to another Everton 24-7 news roundup where the main story of today is another potential fringe player on his way out of Everton and that is Nikola Vlasic. Now Vlasic has been on loan at CSK in Moscow for the past year or so and he's impressed during his spell in Russia. Most notably he won the Man of the Match award in the Champions League against Real Madrid, he scored the winning goal in that game and he was very impressive if not outstanding during the course of the season he spent in Moscow but now his agent Tonchi Martic has spoken out today and say that he's trying to conclude a deal which would see him move to Moscow permanently and there hasn't been a transfer fee officially touted around but you'd imagine it wouldn't be much more than the 10 million fee we paid for him two years ago and if anything we could well be selling him at a loss which isn't great but Given the circumstances, he's not made much of an impact here. Is It could well be worth us cutting our losses. Is it a good move? For me personally, I think we can do a lot worse than to cut our losses and get some money in. We obviously want to make a lot of big transfers this summer and we need to strengthen the squad. We need some extra funds, perhaps. We should be looking to recoup as much money as we can off players that aren't really getting into the first team. Of course, Vlasic isn't anywhere near our first team at the moment and it doesn't look like he's going to be anytime soon. The spell on the blue shirt didn't exactly set the world alight. I mean, I think the one highlight was perhaps that goal he scored against Apollon Limassol in a very underwhelming game otherwise. wasn't much, Didn't really have much of an impact at all. He was in and out of the first team and I think it's telling that none of the managers that he's worked with have seem to have considered them either consistent or reliable enough to warrant first team duties on a regular basis. That's just on the pitch, but off the pitch as well, throwing the fact that he and more notably his sister, Bianca Vlasic, are very outspoken on social media about some of his not so positive, let's say, experiences about Everton. And all of a sudden, you think that it's in everybody's best interest that Nikola Vlasic leaves now, I think. Perhaps I'm being a little bit harsh there, but that's just my opinion. By all means, let me know your opinions in the comments. But for me, Vlasic is a no-go now. I think it's time to cash in and move forward. I'm pretty sure that's what the plan is for Marcel Brands anyway at the moment. But that's what I'll be doing personally. Moving on. And of course, it wouldn't be an Everton transfer window without the customary links to Yassin Brahimi. It's now been five years since he swapped Granada for Porto after the World Cup in Brazil. He was a target for us back then under Roberto Martinez and every summer since there seems to have been a rumour that he'd end up at Goodison or at least somewhere else in England. I think we've all grown to take Brahimi links with a pinch of salt these days but perhaps the one difference this year is that his Porto contract is up this summer and... Given what Marcel Brands worked his magic last summer with Bernard, brought him in on a free transfer. Could he follow suit and bring Yassine Brahimi here on a free? Do I think he'll sanction that signing? No. For that re the reason being really that Brahimi is now 29. That's very that's above that sort of 20 to 25 age range that Marcel Brands is looking for as we try and rebuild the squad. Given how he and Silver have come out and been quite outspoken about how they prefer a left-footed winger, if they were to add a winger this summer, I can't see us going for another inverted right-footed winger. It's just we've got... The squad's very saturated with those sorts of players. Players like Onyakuru, Luckman, some of those themselves may well be leaving. I can't see why we would fork out a potential high signing on fee and high wage in the similar way we did with Bernard to bring another player in who can do the same thing really and is also older it's just there's just no sense in that sort of transfer so I can't see us going for Brahimi just as we did for the last five years so move on from that we've got Donny van der Beek now this one's a bit more of a it's a signing that we think we'd all give the nod he's been very impressive for Ajax last season in the Champions League and as we've seen in those games, he's quite a hard-working box-to-box player. He gets around the pitch or he puts a shift in. And given the profile of the player, you'd imagine he's the kind of player we go for should Idrissa Garner Gay leave Everton this summer. It's 
not something I can see happening right now unless perhaps PSG change their, pl their transfer plans. But what is concerning if we do go after Van der Beek is we've got a pretty colourful track record with signing Dutch players. Of course, David Klassen was a hotly anticipated signing after he played in the Europa League final for Ajax two years ago. It's almost like Van der Beek could follow in his footsteps if we managed to get him. So hopefully it wouldn't be a repeat of Klassen. And of course, there's the, the even more colourful records of the, the likes of Royston Drenthe, a certain Andy van der Meijer. We've not really had the best record when it comes to signing Dutch players, so who knows if we do get Van der Beek, it could well be a change of a change of fortunes when it comes to our Dutch contingent. However, it's not likely we're going to get him, I don't think. Calcio Mercato in Italy reckon Manchester United and Spurs are in pole position to sign Donny van der Beek, so maybe put that one on the back burner for now. Another name which has arisen in the last 24 hours is Gianluca Mancini who is a very young, he's a 20, 20, under-21 international for Atalanta. He's been linked with a 25 million transfer to Everton in the Daily Mirror. That was today. And it's interesting that a couple of centre-backs have started to pop up on our radar, or at least on the newspaper's radar on our behalf, because, of course, the Chelsea transfer ban, it doesn't look like it's going to be overturned at this stage, which may really prove a stumbling block in terms of making Kurt Zuma's loan, which was pretty successful at Everton last season. We might not be able to make that permanent now. So Gianluca Mancini is a name that's popped up, and he is a very good young talent. He's broken into the Atalanta team after a couple of loans at Perugia, and He's really settled in Serie A, got Atalanta into the Champions League, so that might be a bit of a stumbling block maybe for us to get him with, he may not be willing to leave a Champions League team to play for us given our lack of European football, but who knows, I mean, there's, there's the whole financial side of things, we could offer a lot better wages than perhaps Atalanta could, so you never know. Moving on, and a bit closer to home now, Leighton Baines has not yet put pen to paper on a one-year contract extension that he was offered a couple of weeks ago now. Our fans may, start and may be starting to worry a little bit whether or not perhaps Leighton Baines has played his last game for the Blues, but I can't see it. He's strongly expected by the club to still accept those terms and we'll see him next season, hopefully. Um, and speaking of looking forward to next season, Everton have been expected to take part in a European pre-season tournament on the 27th of July, and that's been confirmed today by the official Everton website. More details will be available in the coming days. With the pre-season starting to take shape, hopefully our squad will soon be following suit. There's plenty of time for that, of course, but let us know what you think of some of the players I've mentioned, and Maybe let us know some possible alternatives you can think of. Be, be sure to drop us a comment below and give us a like and subscribe for good measure. Until then, thanks for watching on the Toffee Blues. See you later.